So my name is Sophie Papa, and I'm a medical oncology consultant at Guy's and St Thomas's, and I'm a senior lecturer at King's College London. So I am an academic. I'm a clinical clinician scientist. I have a fellowship from the uh, Medical Research Council, which comes to an end at the end of next year. So I'm about three quarters of the way through kind of the first um, independent period of research that I've done as a clinical academic. And I was asked um, by Adam to come and talk today about kind of what my life's like. And I was sitting at the end of the day thinking about what to put into these into this talk over my five minutes. I thought the best way to do that was to just talk you through the day that I'd just had. So this was last week, I think. That was about a week ago, just ten days ago. Um, and it started at eight o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, where I religiously, if I'm in the, in the country, um, attend our clinical um, journal club in the morning, where it's mainly medical oncology trainees that come, but it's open to all at our institution. And one of our trainees, fellows, or member of the team will present a relevant paper, and we discuss it. And we discuss what it means for oncology practice, and we discuss a lot. We often go into a lot of detail around the methodology that goes into designing clinical trials and clinical research. And we do that on a weekly basis. Um, and this this was the paper that was discussed that week, um, and uh, it was conveniently in melanoma, which is the disease that I treat in the clinic. Um, and this reflects a massive breakthrough or a significant breakthrough in the way we're going to be treating this disease. And this paper and a, a friend that was in the same journal is going to double my workload clinically in the next couple of years, I predict. I then went from there upstairs to our clinical research facility on the 15th floor and had a brief meeting with a really interesting group of people. I'm involved in a clinical trial, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, of some very, very cutting-edge therapy that has been developed in the labs that I work in at King's and is now in the clinic at Guy's and St Thomas's. And it involves... Gen, sort of good manufacturing process because we're making a cell product that is um, autologous from patients and so we have a weekly meeting where we go through all of the technical challenges around that and I'm in that meeting with people who are re responsible for production quality and then patient care so that's a, a meeting we have every week and the trial that we're involved in is called the T4 immunotherapy trial and this is a picture of one of our patients that we treated and we're treating patients with head and neck cancer with autologous genetically modified T cells that are injected into their tumour in an attempt to try and create a really vigorous immune response in the tumour that will hopefully lead to improvement in quality and length of life for those patients. That's all I'm going to say because I've only got five minutes, but if anyone's interested, grab me afterwards. It's quite complex. Um, and then from there, I went to my team meeting, the nine o'clock meeting. I went to my team meeting with my research group. So I run a very small academic group called the um, Immunoengineering Group at King's. There are three of us, apart from me at the moment. And we do research into CAR T-cell therapy and into CAR T-cell imaging. So we heard a little bit about needing to understand about physics when you go into a clinical oncology career. Well, I did an A-level in physics. I'm not really sure why I didn't become a clinical oncologist. I probably should have done. I was waste, but I didn't waste that knowledge because I now actually do a lot of medical imaging, SPECT and CT imaging in animals and hopefully in the future um, in patients. And so we, I met with my team and what we do there is that all members of the team will present all their new data from that week um, to me and we discuss the things that have gone well, which are normally very few, and the things that have gone wrong, which are normally very plentiful, and try and solve the problems. So there's some data that one of my, fellow, one of my um, PhD students presented. And then at 11 o'clock, I went up and did a ward, pa a ward round of the inpatients um, with melanoma in the hospital. Apologies to my children making noise at the back of the room. Um, and all of the three patients that were in that week were in with complications of immune therapy. We're using immune therapy to treat melanoma now, immune therapy and targeted therapy. We don't use chemotherapy anymore. I mean, that's a revolution, really, isn't it, that, that has happened in my lifetime as an oncologist. Um, but a consequence of using the immune system to fight cancer is that we make people poorly with auto-inflammatory conditions. And some of those can be quite severe and unpleasant, especially in melanoma, where we use a pretty aggressive combination of treatments in some patients. So I spent an hour and a bit going around and seeing those patients and trying to help um, get them out of hospital as fast as possible. And then in the afternoon, I went across to another site um, within the university and did what I was just mentioning. I spent about two hours... Um, scanning some mice. I was doing bioluminescence imaging of some mice that have got some xenografts, some tumours established under the skin, and we're interested in the cell line that we've injected into them. Um, we've got two cell lines, one from a malignant part of a prostate and another from the non-malignant prostate of the same patient. And we're trying to get those, um, those tumour cell lines to grow and metastasize in animals, because we don't have a good model of metastatic prostate cancer, which limits some of the research that can be done in the sort of preclinical and translational space for that disease. So there's some of that, and that's a graph of that imaging experiment that, that we're in the middle of doing. And then I spent the rest of the afternoon working on submitting my uh, CAR T-cell imaging paper that I was talking about, which thankfully got submitted to, resubmitted two days ago, so hopefully that will get published. 
And there are some pictures from some of the animals that are included in those experiments. So there's never a dull moment. That was one day. Um, it was quite a busy day, if I'm being honest. Um, but it wasn't a particularly clinical day. And I do have clinical days where I'm pretty much in clinic all day. As Adam talked about, oncology is an outpatient specialty. And on a Thursday, I sit in clinic all day after RMDM, seeing patients with melanoma. Um, and that's all I've got to say today. <laughs>